Um, our next speaker is Marion Kelt, who's a librarian and a learning technologist from Glasgow Caledonian University. And she's developed something called the UK Online Copyright Advisor. And again, this is going to be a participatory session. So she's um, inviting you to road test this and give her some feedback. So welcome, Marion. Hello, everybody. Uh, run now while you have the chance. Um, I feel very, very inadequate. I don't even have any cats playing the piano pictures. I have, though, got a picture I made earlier, which I was going to put up on the wall because I was picturing a small, intimate room where we all just sat about and had a nice chat, and it's all gone a bit sideways. So here is my poster. It's awesome. But here's one I drew earlier, right? So we'll pretend, now class, let's pretend this is sticking up on the wall. Oh, your arms are going to get tired. Oh, yeah, what are we going to do without Martin? I think I'll just carry him about with me in the future. Uh, I feel a wee bit like a pub rock band who suddenly got dumped in the O2 arena and they said, right, you know, do your best with that hen. So I have actually, in the absent, very first time I have ever talked to people without PowerPoint slides. I mean, we're talking live and without a safety net here. But I've written notes. There they are, look. Just to prove that I've written notes. So we were talking earlier about optimism being a discipline. And doing something social, pro-social, like that sounds good. So I've actually done a pro-social thing, and I want you to try it out. And in the spirit of feedback, I want you to tell me what you think of it. Now, one of my many jobs, because I have lots, is to be the university copyright advisor. And let's face it, everybody hates copyright, including me. So I, this is a, an opt a sort of thing about you don't run away quick enough when you get a job. So. What I would like is for you people to try it out. Now, I've got librarians to give me feedback, but their feedback tends to be, oh, great, you've done something so we don't have to, and it's all weird technical voodoo, and, you know. So I thought, well, you guys probably know a lot more about the ins and outs of technology. So I have brought homework for you. See, you, everybody else gives you stickers and, and sticky pads, but oh, no, this horrible Scottish woman gives you homework. So... I would like, so this is like school, take one and pass it off. So we'll start at that end. And I think I might just have enough handouts for you all. So what we're going to do, again back to the live and without a safety net, is we are going to get the copyright advisor up online and you're all going to have a shot of it. Now, if you don't have your handy dandy device with you, it should work on your phone. Uh, and if it doesn't, I can lend you my machine. Just don't break it, because I've got to take it back. Now, uh, you can see on your little sheets, uh, there is the address, but you can just Google it and just do GCU Copyright Advisor. And it should, there you go. Couldn't have planned it better. Up it comes, right at the top there. You can just go in. Now, this is completely open because we're big on the open. And the idea is that we have built this thing and we are sharing it under Creative Commons for you to download and do what you will with it. So if you are not lucky enough to live in Scotland, never mind, you can download the files and you can edit them in Markdown, which is quite easy to use because I used it, so it must be easy. And you can change it to suit your own institution, your own country, your own version of copyright laws. Just do what you want with it. So, ah, it's the wrong version. Oh, horrors. That shouldn't have happened. Ah, uh, okay, we will not panic, we will not panic. We'll just add in some more keywords, because we're librarians and that's what we do. Uh, Okay, I knew I should have run away and hid in the toilets. Right, have you all got your addresses? Because it's got the right address in the worksheet. We have not worksheet over here. Ah, right, if, if you could pass them on. We're quite enough. Okay, so you can share. Here, I'll share. Ah, here we go. There we go. This, this is the new 
and improved copyright advisor. If you Google CARP, not crap, uh, and put copyright advisor, it should come up and just link you straight in. Uh, the idea of this is, this is the new version which we got a grant to upgrade. It's now on HTML5, so it should work on a variety of different uh, devices. And we'd like you to just have a wee shot, so pick, pick a type of resource. Why I thought you may, I know it's a long stretch, but you may be interested in it, is that a lot of learning technologists do get harassed with copyright questions from lecturers because they think you guys know everything about everything. Like librarians, you know, you, you just know everything. Uh, so they're like, okay, I want to do this and I want to put all these images in and I want to put all these videos and I just got them off the internet so it's all right because the internet's magic and I want to put it all into my resource. And you sort of say, and got a book copyright and they all say, what's that? What are you talking about? So this has all of our knowledge about copyright all put into it. So the other thing that we found with the old one, the content's pretty much the same, but the old one had a lot of problems navigating about. And if you went backwards, it broke uh, and it was very aggravating. So this one, you can jump about. So say, I'll just give you a wee for instance. Say I, I want to do a lovely PowerPoint for my lecture and I want to share it on the VLE or the LMS, I think some people call it. So we go in here and it asks you questions. So it's like, right, did you create that lovely image? And you go, no, not me, wasn't me, I didn't draw that copyright thing there. Uh, where did you get it? Most people just randomly surf about and grab images. So say, I, okay, got it off the internet, there we go. And then you say, well, what way do you want to share it? Do you want open access? Do you want closed access? And then, of course, we have to explain what we mean by that, because all of our lecturers just basically don't know what it means. So we put in IOK. It's on Blackboard or whatever. And we go. And there's your answer. So the other thing that we tried to do is not put too many words in. Now, I don't know if I'm doing a disservice to all of our academics, because they hate too many words and they especially hate too many words about copyright. So we cut it down, we put links to outside resources, because it can jump out, uh, and we put in a glossary, because sometimes they don't know what all the words mean. Well, I'm cruel to them. Uh, so what you can do at this point is say, ah, oh, well, actually, that's not quite what I'm planning to do. So you can start again from the beginning. So you think, no, it wasn't an image at all, it was a video video of a cat playing the piano. So, where'd it go? Here it is. We can go in there. And then you get the same sort of framework because this was really hard work was uh, actually developing the framework so that we could then put it online. So it all kind of works the same way. And another thing I would like, if you have any bright ideas, is other things that we could add into this. We were thinking we might, if we're feeling very brave, do questionnaires because one of the questions we get asked a lot from students and researchers is well I've got this questionnaire and I want to use it for my PhD and you're like where did you get it and you go through it's like Groundhog Day copyright is just one big horrible awful Groundhog Day welcome to my life uh, so <clears throat> you can see we just go back down our questions but they, they vary the questions depending what resource you're talking about. Uh, so if you got it from Bob, if you want to stick it on the VLE, there's your answer. If you think, oh no, I clicked the wrong button because I was going so fast, you can just jump back up. Go in there and say, well actually I filmed it on my phone earlier. So it, it allows you to navigate through. Uh, so, oh, my plan was originally, I said, right, at this point, I would sit back and have a wee rest while you guys did all the work and tried it out, uh, and also you people at home out in the wider world, uh, give me your feedback. Now, you can feedback on Twitter, do whatever, you know, whatever you've got. I'd really like to hear what you think and how you would think of maybe using it. Uh, so that's Mugpunter7 
on Twitter, so you can tweet to me uh, and let me know. The other thing I thought we could do was if any of you have any questions as we're going, just shout them out and I'll, I'll try my best to answer them. Oh, just go away and stop making us do this homework. Um, I should say that the second version was created with a Slick Innovation Grant. Thank you, Slick, for paying for We have a lovely company who actually built the web platform for us. And they said, right, there's your, there's your framework. Go to it. Fill it in with the content. So I put the words in, and they built the framework for us. Um, thanks very much. I have a question. I'm just wondering if you've had people that have uh, remixed it or adapted it, particularly outside the UK, for other jurisdictions with Not different yet. copyright law. Not yet. I'm, I'm hoping, well, I thought this would be actually a very good opportunity because we're from all over the place. You know, some of the, the laws are very similar, some are different. We're, we're actually planning to jump sectors. I've got a group of NHS librarians who are interested in doing one for the NHS. Because I had thought, oh, the exceptions are pretty much the same, and they went, no, they're not. The licences aren't the same. It's just, it just needs a wee tweak. So they're away working out some words, and then we'll put together a version there. There's another possibility that people in the archives sector might use it. Um, the questions aren't quite the same, but there are a lot of issues there around maybe exhibitions and that sort of thing. So we're sort of thinking we've got the decision tree software and we can use it, just whatever words people want to plug into it, and it's quite easy to move about the questions and whatever, uh, and put your own logo in, whatever. Um, the other thing we were thinking of using it for is actually in the day-to-day -day work of the library, and maybe using it for a decision tree for electronic resource problems, because we're big on having folk wandering about the library, pouncing on innocent library users and saying, have you got a problem? And whenever they have a problem, it's always e-journals aren't working or databases are down. So we thought, well, actually, we could use that same methodology and get them to go through. And so the person who's standing with the irate or distressed student can then go through and say, OK, well, it's not going to work because you've put in your NHS password or you've done this or whatever. So we thought that might be useful. We haven't done it yet, but we're still at the thinking stage. This is very much just escaped out of its box at the moment, so it's all shiny and new. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping you guys will all have bright ideas for me. I'm quiet. Oh. Oh. Chris. One thing I've. Thanks very much, Marianne. And um, as we, we're both fellow copyright geeks, and one of the things that us copyright geeks do love to talk about is all the complexity about copyright. And what this does is clearly try to strip out that complexity by funneling people down to the core piece of advice that they need. But I think it's it's about that balance, isn't it? Because I think sometimes what, what my my question would be: Have you had any feedback about whether using this approach loses some of that broader context because you're kind of delivering now a, a very specific piece of advice mm -hmm. and actually what I find when I'm talking to people as a human being about copyright yeah. is picking up on those different contextual things about making decisions yes. particularly around risk. Yeah people have kind of used it as a basic starting point and that because I thought oh this is great this is going to save me half my work and they'll go away happy but it didn't work like that. Uh, quite often they've used it as a, a starting point and then they've come to me and said, aye, well, that's all very well, but what about X or Y or Z? Uh, like the other week, I had one that was quite complicated and it had to do with the fundamental advice and the advisor was right, but then they had other issues around like uh, wider licensing issues and did the, what trumped what? Did copyright law trump the license and that sort of thing? And you can't really put that, uh, you know, I've kind of, the difficult bit in creating that was crunching the knowledge down to fit the format. And then there are bits in that that just says, well, it's too complicated, get in touch with us, and here's the email address. Because yeah. you just have to in some cases. Uh, so we, we have had to do that. And the other thing is, I mean, what you could do is just not do it at all and just have a big screen that says, it's complicated, let's talk. There, there, never mind. Yeah. You know, and that would sum it up. Okay. Yeah, there's been talk about having our kind of 
s service desk system where people put in queries and that we can encode some of this information in there. Obviously, from my perspective, I think, well, that, that does me out of a job uh -huh. if you end up encoding all of that in there. But I think it's just trying to get that. It's, it's too woolly, yeah. you know, it, it, because it's legal and we're waiting for case law to catch up. Lady up there in the green, and man there in the white shirt as well. <laughs> um, I'm wondering about accessibility and in particular for like the journal article or a PDF. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't see any information on the website. I or have been you been thinking about that because and one of my other hats is that I'm developing a workflow for the library to help provide accessible copies for visually impaired or otherwise users. And I was just I'm, I'm still at the stage thinking, yeah, that would be quite a good one if we could figure it out. So I'll need to, what I do is I work very closely with our university disability team because it's not enough to say, well, we can do this and that. You know, there's things like, well, what, what format do you need and what type of PDF and all that sort of thing. So that could be son of copyright advisor coming over the hill. But yeah, that's a really good point And it's one that I, I have been thinking about. I think one thing that could be very simple you could put on here is understanding the licensing of how you can manipulate a document mm, in yeah. terms of accessibility. That's true. Because, I mean, a lot of times the, the user has the technology in their own hands. They just have to know that it's okay. And they right, can do it. but also, like, if you use a technology such as Abbey Fine Reader to prepare the PDF so that a screen mm -hmm. reader could read it, it will identify blocks of text, but sometimes you reorder them or you yeah. have to type in text over it. So you are, al you are physically altering the document itself and so mm -hmm. that's a very confusing thing for me yeah. of can i actually use this open education resource based on the license if i alter it for accessibility purposes yeah, that's, that's true that that actually would be interesting to follow that one up i can see more white hair sprouting just as we speak there <laughs> The thing with this is, once it copyrights like that, once you start turning over the stones and looking under them, you find like a whole world of creepy crawlies of, of problems, and one sort of runs off and, and brings another one. The man there with the beard. Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah, it mentions um, what, uh, when things have gone well and you get a green screen, it mentions this is fine for non commercial educational use, I think. Yeah. I don't know what non-commercial education right, uses. Well, so, because to me, like, all of education is commercial. We, we have been informed yeah. by the powers that be, as in the folk with suits that pay my wages, they've said, everything we do is non-commercial educational use. And I went, but, but what about... Well, it's, it's tricky. It's complicated. Because I started thinking about, well, what about people in partner institutions where they're actually paying fees? But in Scotland, it's a kind of different based model. Uh, but they said, no, no, Mrs. Don't go looking for trouble. <laughs> we have defined it as, and this is what you are working to, it's non-commercial. So I went, right, that's fine. You just put that in an email, and I'm good with that. So I'm just working to that definition. Now, I would say... Ethically, that's probably a bit ropey, but I'm not, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> you know, life's too short. Which is a rotten answer, sorry. I think everybody's going. Oh, Sheila's got one now. It's actually just more of a comment. I work with Marion at GCU, and actually I think something that's come through um, in the conference is... The, where do people start? Where do you find out about openness? And how can we extend the community? Um, I think for me, just being able to use this, yes, it doesn't give me all the answers, but it's a good starting point. It's a non-threatening starting point. And I think it's the kind of thing that we need to, Kate was talking about, you know, being hidden in the open. Hello. You know, <laughs> that we need more things like this to allow people to start having the conversation so that they can go to Marion and her colleagues and say, well, actually, it told me this. I have no idea what that means. Can you mm. help? And yes, you can. Yeah, because one of the things we thought, well, uh, one of the other things that I'm, I'm kind of tasked with thinking about is getting people to do open educational resources and to share them and th think about Creative Commons and ways that they can share. And one of the barriers 
is copyright, because people are like, oh, I'm scared, I've got this stuff that I've been using for years, but I don't know where I got the images, and I'm damned if I can remember. So uh, I spend a lot of time saying, well, let's, let's have a look and see if we can find where they were, and, and then like, okay, we can't find it, it no longer exists, but maybe we can find something similar that will do the same job. So I spend a lot of time pre preparing lists of good copyright-free or openly licensed resources that people can use. And then they went, oh, I never knew about that. I never knew about that. And they're away and they're happy. But it's getting them over that wee hump to start them. Uh, and we're trying to build it in. When we get our new lecturers in, they, they have an induction program. So we're trying to get them to talk about where they keep the resources, using EdShare to share them, using Creative Commons, not to be scared of copyright, all of these things. But the ones that have all been jumping about for 20 years, it's interesting. I have many interesting conversations <laughs> with our more entrenched academics. I was just interested to see if you'd, had, if you'd noticed an, an increase in conversations around Creative Commons or um, licensing based on the resource. It sounds like it might be a route into um, broader conversations. Well, because it, it is still really new and I've not given it a real big push yet, I wouldn't say since that's been out there, but since I've been engaging people and working with Sheila's department, and you know, it's no good sitting in the library, you end up just talking to yourself. So you have to get out there and you have to talk to like uh, organisation development and various other people. And once they say, oh, that's the wee woman we talked to about licensing or... or copyright or whatever, then it starts to roll from there. It's like what I always used to call the hairdresser effect. So if somebody finds a good hairdresser and they tell all their pals and then suddenly you can't get an appointment with your hairdresser because everybody's using them. Academics are no different from anybody else and they respect word of mouth more than anything. You know, if, if an edict comes from on high and says, you will all do this, oh no, we bloody won't, uh, because they're Scots and that's how we are. But if you say, well, here's this thing and it'll save you loads of work, they go, oh, well, okay, I'll get a shot. You know, it, it's how you come at a thing, but there's no quick and easy way to do it. But we are getting analytics on it, so I, every now and then I go in and I have a wee look. Okay, I think uh, that's about the end of our time for this session. Mary, thank, thank you so much. <laughs> um, a round of applause for Mary, please. Um, and, and can I